Hey guys, it's Alex, and today what I'm going to do is um, something that is regular maintenance, but I, I don't think it's talked about a lot enough when it comes to supercharged applications and spark plug selection. So if you have a supercharged vehicle, let's say 10 or 11 PSI uh, Mustang, Coyote Mustang specifically, because that's all I deal with, um, we recommend a couple of spark plugs, whether it be a Brisk 14 or an NGK 6510. Now we recommend Denzos for anything higher um, uh, boost wise or brisk 12s or 10s depending on how much power you're gonna make. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna replace the spark plugs that are in the white car. The white car has had um, NGK 6510s part number LTR7IX. It already has a set of these in it, but it has about 10,000 miles on the car. So I felt an intermittent miss, basically, uh, when you start the car, it doesn't turn over like it should. Mechanically, the car should turn over consistently all the time. When there's a variable, like, a, you know, instead of, if it goes chugga, 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 and then it turns on, but what if it goes chugga, 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 chugga like it, it goes like a stutter, um, something's up. And then when it starts, it kind of goes like a, a thudding. Da, 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 And when you rev it, it clears up. So I'm like, I wonder if it needs a spark plug change because when you're up in the RPMs, it's not a problem. So stop talking. What I'm going to do is gap these down to about 26 to 25 thousandths. Now, that sounds like a tight gap. But when I had these guys gap the 28 thousandths on a 12 and a half to one motor on pump gas with about 11 PSI, I did see a little spark plug blow up. Uh, some indicators of spark plug blow up. Once I gapped them down, they were fine. So when in doubt, gap them down. So I have a very easy gap tool um, from Autocraft. You can get it from anywhere. Uh, Vance, O'Reilly's, uh, Vato Zone. You can pretty much get it. So this is the way I like to gap the spark plugs with a tool that has little shims, little pre-cut uh, shims like that. And I'll just select the 25,000 shim right here and go ahead and gap it to that. The nice thing about this tool is it has a little guy here so you can actually bring the strap down or up. Basically, the way it works is you take it out and you basically grab the strap with it, okay? You basically, it's kind of hard to see, but right here you can open the gap, make sure you don't get on the porcelain, or you can close the gap. So you pull this way to open the gap and you go up to tighten the gap instead of smacking it down on a piece of cardboard or something like that. Or if you have a piece of paper and you wanna push it down, you can do so and then check the gap periodically. Let me get all these down. The 25,000s, gonna to go to the white car, replace the plugs. You'll see how much of a pain in the ass it is to gap, I'm sorry, to replace the spark plugs on the white on a, on a white car that's a 2018 and up. 2018 and up with the DI and the way everything is placed and the coils, it's a lot more difficult than Gen 2, and I'll show you the difference. Let's go ahead and do so. Hey guys, so here I'm at the garage, garage, um, and I got the white uh, 2019, and I'm in front of Hush Money, which I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna install the supercharger um, and change the spark plugs on this guy. Now, I did wanna show you guys the biggest difference, I think, between Gen 1 and Gen 2 when it comes to aesthetics. A lot of you guys are considering Gen 3s for swaps. And usually when it's swap vehicles, it's more about the look, not performance, because Gen 2 can perform just as good as Gen 3, but for whatever reason, you guys want to go Gen 3. Now, if you're getting a Gen 3 motor, this is what the coil covers look like. Okay, they're very busy. The DI pump is back there. The two coils, there's one coil, another coil, and then two kind of close back here. And the driver's side, similar very very busy guys it is a very busy looking setup here along with the vortex uh over full tank situation um so what does gen 2 look like well smooth super smooth you can get custom coil covers to say lawn racing ford performance coyote swap 89lx i eat ass whatever so a lot of you guys that are considering gen 2 gen 3 swaps you gotta understand in terms of aesthetics, you can do a lot more with Gen 2, make the same power with Gen 2, and it is available now. Gen 3 is starting to become available. Understand this. Um, aesthetically, you're probably better off getting a Gen 2, but some people, for whatever reason, are dead set on getting Gen 3 stuff, which is fine. I understand it, but Gen 2 stuff, 
is ready now. So let's do this. Because I have about 10,000 miles or so on the spark plugs and I've run a couple of tanks of octanium through it, um, octanium additive, I'm gonna replace the spark plugs because I'm feeling very intermittent miss. I'm very in tune with the car. So I wanna make sure that the intermittent miss isn't something more crucial. So I'll take the spark plugs out, see what they're gapped at because it, it's been through about 10,000 miles of constant boost. And then replace them with a set of NGK 6510s, which is right here, NGK 6510s, which is what's in there now. And I already pre-gapped these to 26,000. So I'll check the gap on these guys, see what they look like after 10,000 miles and a couple of tanks of octanium. See what it looks like and see if the intermittent miss goes away. Let me get at it. I'm not going to show you the process. It's work. I'll show you the end result of what the plugs look like and what, what hole they came out of and then show you the difference. I thought this was interesting to show you guys. Um, Gen 3, Gen 2 differences. So look at the coil situation here. I just did, undid the bolts, but I want to show you how the coils are laid in there and the difference between Gen 2 and Gen 3. And this is especially when you're considering a swap. Look at how straightforward and easy to access the coils are. Look at Boom, 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 boom. Nice and easy. Now let's go over to Gen 3. This is Gen 2, by the way. Okay, <laughs> okay, alrighty, what the hell's going on? So this guy, it's like a remote coil, it's like a remote situation, you know? It's like, oh, here's a spark plug somewhere over here, and yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> this guy is like tucked in all sideways, and the high pressure fuel pump. See, big difference, especially, especially aesthetically. Now, this splatter stuff here was, one of the fittings was loose on this guy, and I didn't notice it. And so the other day, I pulled it apart, make sure everything was good, and cinched it down that's 100 percent my fault so it was just leaking a little bit so i'm hoping that's i doubt that's the issue but look at this yeah so how are you going to do custom coil over coil covers on this thing if you guys are all about aesthetics and the other side is pretty complicated too actually a little more straightforward because of the high pressure fuel pump missing boom 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 okay just wanted to show you that real quick okay got all the spark plugs out fairly easily uh, scale the one to ten if you are somewhat mechanically inclined a two very easy just a process check out coil number three so this is bank one okay passenger side is bank one so you go one two three four five six seven eight this is bank two bank one look at number three cylinder bank one <laughs> it's a remote mounted coil situation so now these are the spark plugs that came out of it. Let's zoom in. One, two, three, four. Look at the discoloration. Pretty significant discoloration in the spark plugs. Come on, baby. Okay, now this is about two cans of um, octanium run through it and about 10,000 miles with pump gas. Understand, guys, pump gas has a lot of crappy additives. We don't like pump gas for power per se, so when people tout pump gas power numbers, I just kind of chuckle and I'm like, you really hate your engine. Now, I also, I noticed this spark plug has anises on it, a big no-no, huge no-no. So understand, going forward, never use anises on the threads of a car. Now, why is that? Believe it or not, it kind of, it changes how everything transfers heat-wise. And if you don't think so, then, um, do some research and find out what <laughs> anices, nickel anices, or any kind of anices does to a spark plug. I know you guys want to prevent galling, but it just be careful putting the spark plug in. I do not recommend any kind of anices, but that's cylinder number one, and the, all of them look the same. And I think they're just due for some replacement. So let's keep it chugging, move the other side, get the other side out, and show you the other side bank two spark plugs. Okay, so bank uh, one looks just as shitty as bank two. Right here you can see the discoloration in the ceramic slash porcelain, whatever you want to call it. Again, uh, no anises on spark plugs ever. Shops, shops, shops. This is all shops. I'm talking to shops now. Do not install anises on the threads of any spark plugs on a supercharged coyote. Thank you very much. Here we go. So, looks like they were in need of a change. Now, I'm gonna check the gap real quick. And let me see, where's the gapping tool? Let me find that real quick. It was literally right here. 
So they were gapped to 25 thousandths before. See if it opened up at all. Let me find it. Let's do 26, which is what I gapped the new ones to. And I'll do my best to get this on camera. Probably won't be able to. But uh, let me just check it real quick. Yes, sir. 20, 26 thousandths. Nice and snug in there. It didn't really move. I'll check all of them just to make sure that it's 26 thousand. Why is it not fucking zooming? There it is. So 26 thousandths. Where is it? 26 thousandths. So it seems to be okay. Let me check the others. Yes, sir. Every single one checked out to be 26 thousandths. I just put them here because they're, they're no good. They're junk. But the gap was good. So now let's put in the brand new uh, 65 tens and then start the car. Let's see if that little miss that I detected on startup and again, it's something I've felt, not something that came up in a data log. Understand guys, I cannot see a misfire in a data log in terms of a code. So I most, mostly went by butt dyno. So get these installed, start the car. The other side was way easier to get to. Bank two, which is driver's side. Sorry, yeah, bank two, which is driver's side was way, way easier to do than um, bank one, which is passenger side. So let's get these installed and get done with this video. Remember guys, this is what they're supposed to look like you piece of shit camera there you go nice and clean and new got to about twenty let let's get them on there just like that i'm done so a novice someone who's never done it before i would say it's going to take you all of about an hour to change the plugs on your car if you this one was complicated more by the catch can and was complicated more by the vortec overflow tank relocation kit but all in all, just straightforward, straightforward shit. Clean it up, make sure everything's happy. Now what I'm looking for in the startup is for the car to crack on, like rah, like really nice. And when it cranks, it should be a nice consistent crank. It should be like jugga, 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 vroom. It cannot go jugga, 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 jugga. You know, really weird, because that's what was happening. It made me go, hmm, let's take a look at the spark plugs. And sure enough, they look like they've been through hell and back. So, maybe let's see if I could put the phone down somewhere nearby record the startup it's not going to be easy i'm working with very limited equipment by myself uh do my best to get you a halfway decent shot and the magic is in the editing really i mean come on let's just be let's be serial yeah i can't flip it around like that it'll be all fucked up where do i put this guy you know what somewhere around here would be okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh hell yeah bro all right let's turn this guy on Battery. Also, I was noticing the little oxidation in the battery, so I'm gonna clean up the battery too. But we'll see. some of the coils yes sir that's exactly what happened this guy's clicked in this guy's clicked in this guy's clicked in okay so I was missing number seven I'm sorry number three one two three number three was not plugged in so pretty good okay let's uh, see if it starts any better have to clean the battery <laughs> A little better, yeah, it doesn't hesitate nearly as much. And it seems to be a lot smoother, oh yeah. Yeah, you don't feel that da 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 There was definitely, no, I don't want to say down a cylinder, but definitely not crisp in terms of how it sounded at idle. And you've got to be aware of everything that's going on in your vehicle. The tune has not changed in months. Then all of a sudden, stuff started acting up. And I was like, well, let me, instead of looking through the tune, because, let's be honest, the tune doesn't change. And listen to that guy purr. Oh, yeah. Just in case you guys notice, I do support our troops. And if you don't, really, fuck you forever. If you got issues with them. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go take it for a drive, vlog on it a little bit. 
now that I got some new plugs in it, see how it feels. I'm still tempted to remove this guy from it totally and put like a filter on that guy because it feels really good. Look at the amount of crap that was on the battery terminal. It was unreal. So now that it's cleaned up, it should start better more consistently. So let me go out there, take it for a drive, see how it feels, and then get started on the blower install for the Fairmont. That'll be on the next video. So let me go out there, take it for a drive. Okay, after driving the car, drove really good. Um, no issues, it's crisp, actually feels a little quicker, which is odd. So that's something to look out for if you're gonna run a lot of additives in your fuel, meaning boosting, octanium, things like that. Your spark plug life is gonna be decreased. It's just gonna happen because there's a lot of additive and it just when it burns, it's just kind of dirty. Yeah, it causes higher octane, but at the cost of spark plug life in my opinion so just wanted to show you guys the differences between gen 2 and gen 3 especially when it comes to aesthetics and i wanted to show you what the spark plugs look like after about 10,000 miles or so and two containers of octanium through them understand octanium in my opinion is not a replacement for race gas or e85 and it should not be used often in my opinion that's why I don't really recommend it when people ask me, what do you think about this? I go, it's good for an octane booster, but I would not use it often because you're going to get decreased spark plug life. So hopefully this video was somewhat educational and, um, you know, it was a pretty straightforward guy. I needed some maintenance, so might as well teach someone something, especially when it comes to the differences between Gen 2 and Gen 3 and what spark plugs look like after running some additives through them. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.